Hi, my name is Dave Ranji, and I'd like to take you through an introduction to my new course on basic home electrical wiring by example. Just a little background about myself. I've been an electrician for over 40 years, a licensed electrical contractor working in residential, commercial, and industrial projects. And so during this time, I gathered a lot of experience and I decided I really want to share this with the public and especially for homeowners, new electricians, uh, instructors, inspectors, and what have you, all about home electrical wiring. And the course is pretty extensive and it covers a lot of ground. So let's go through it to give you an introduction here. We're gonna be covering safety, basics of electricity, concept and theory, tools, testers, electrical distribution panel, circuit breakers, wire and cable, basic wiring methods, Home electrical wiring on the job, receptacle outlets, switches, light fixtures, ceiling fans, surge protection, and how to update a older home electrical wiring. So first of all, we really get into safety. I stress how um, homeowners especially should not be working with live electricity. Nobody should be working with live electricity, and so we walk you through that. We show you where the main disconnect switches and circuit breakers and how to identify those and turn them off. We go ahead and give you an introduction to the basics of electricity as with electricity coming to the home through an overhead service, an underground service, a electrical service from the power grid and even an off-grid system. We also cover Ohm's law and the concept and theory. We give you Ohm's Law calculations and show you the most commonly used Ohm's Law calculations and how they apply at the home and for configuring electrical circuits. We show you the, a lot of the basic circuits that are installed in the home. Some of the, most of them are required by National Electrical Code. And again, we go back and we cover the Ohm's Law and how that applies to configuring these circuits and the circuit breakers and the wire sizes, etc. We show you a lot of examples and wiring diagrams of switches and outlets especially and show you how they are calculated out according to Ohm's Law as well. Then we get into the tools and we cover the hand and pouch tools, power tools and special tools. These are the most common tools that I actually use personally on the web on the site when I'm out on the job wiring custom homes and different projects. Some of the tools are special tools and have a special purpose and we'll explain those. We get into uh, areas of the home that require special tools, especially up in the attic when you're working with insulation. Then we get into an area of testers, plug-in testers, non-contact testers, analog and digital testers, and we give you a rundown about how those are used on the job, the different settings, the different um, items that you can use these testers for and how they're used on a daily basis and they're basically one of the most important tools that you've got in your pouch. And we stress how those, the tools are used, the meters are used along with um, the different applications there on the job. Okay, and then we get into the main electrical panel. We're giving you an exterior view of a 120 and 240 volt service, showing you the main service panel the interior overview of the panel giving you the main service, showing you the main service meter, the panel circuit bus, the earth to ground and neutral system, the earth ground components, and the main breaker disconnect. Now after that, we give you a little rundown about what all of this means and how it applies to the circuits and the circuit breakers that are found in your panel, what 120 and 240 volt means, as far as the service and the circuits going out to the various circuits and areas of the home, what they're used for. We also start getting into a little bit more of the interior view and stressing again the danger and uh, aspects of electricity inside the panel. And then we show you a representation of the panel and an average panel, what the circuit bus is inside the panel, and how the components are put together, especially looking at the earth ground neutral bond system there in the panel. We're looking at the different uh, components of the ground system, and then we get into how those come together inside the panel, 
We also show you the main circuit breaker, give you a little bit more a representation of how that is integrated into your panel bus, how it works, and the different areas that are energized and what to stay away from. Then we look at the circuit bus and how it distributes out to the home through circuit breakers and the various circuits for all the devices in the home. Then we touch on this fuse type panels, showing you what are the signs of a fuse panel in a home. What are you looking for as far as a home that may have outdated uh, electrical wiring in an old fuse box? Where does it start? And then we look at the fuse box. If you notice that you're working on a job and you see that there is an old fuse box, how do you shut off the main? How do you shut off circuits? Well, we show you that. We give you a very good representation of where the main disconnect is and how to turn off the power for different circuits before you work on anything like that. Then we get into circuit breakers, 124, 120 volt and 240 volt circuits, uh, the, the different brands, types, and styles, single pull, double pull, tandem, quad, and installing a circuit breaker, and then uh, most important too is the multi-wire circuits and how those are configured. And the different uh, brands of circuit breakers you will see, they are not all alike, and not all of them are interchangeable within a panel. So we want to stress that and show you that. We'll show you a typical installation of a single pole breaker, how it installs into the panel. We show you the difference between a single pole breaker, which is a 120 volt circuit, and a two pole breaker, which is a 240 volt breaker. And then we get into the tandem and quad breakers, arc fault circuit breakers, and then we get into different areas about where those applications are really beneficial for, and some of them that are required by code, of course. Arc fault circuit breakers, GFCI circuit breakers, and of course now we've got combination circuit breakers of AFCI and GFCI. And how these are, work, are used in different areas and applications of the home, especially like a GFCI circuit breaker for a hot tub, which is required. And then we get into wire and cable. And the typical cables that we're using for number 14, 12, and 10 wire systems, uh, which is 15, 20, and 30 amp services, circuits throughout the home. We look at old electrical cable in some of the older homes, what that looks like and what it was used for. We look at knob and tube wiring, and we also look at wire connections. But we look at how to identify the wire and what it really is, what it means, and what the applications were for. The different types of wire connectors that are used for wiring connections out there in the home. Then we're looking at the basic wiring methods. We're looking at connecting wires to terminal screws, use, how to use a wire stripper, and making a wire splice, and a pigtail. Pigtail ground. Pigtail is used for splicing wires and making connections to switches and outlets, receptacles. And we show you how to do that. Show you how to Go ahead and make up a splice that could be used for a pigtail or just splicing wires through in a junction box. The whole process and procedure of using the tools and the methods for that. And then we get into a full elect home electrical wiring project starting with plans and permits, the installing the electrical boxes, drilling the holes, installing the wiring, installing the main panel, staple and securing the wiring, and making up all the circuit com connections and bonding the ground wire, and then installing the circuit devices after the rough inspection has been performed. But we take you through the whole project. We show you drilling holes, we show you running wire, we show you stapling wiring, and then the wiring that's uh, run and used for lighting circuits, outlet circuits, how to install flush cans and uh, recessed lighting, and then you know, making up the wiring connections, uh, identifying your wires, keeping track of all of those, making documentation, and then getting ready for the rough inspection. How to protect the wire, how to get that wiring uh, configurations and splices and everything done for the inspection. And then what happens after the inspection? Getting all of your boxes and wiring ready for sheetrock and the wall coverings. And then the process showing you especially in a kitchen, 
right through the whole process from open framing to sheetrock to finished walls, cabinets being installed and setting all the devices of uh, outlets and switches and receptacles, flush light trims and hooking up your, your devices, your equipment in the kitchen, your 240 volt equipment for ovens, ranges, and then even trimming out into the house your receptacles and switches and starting to install ceiling fans, outside GFCI receptacles, interior lighting uh, in the bathroom, in the closets, and then we get into the garage. We take a look at installing some of the garage components in there. Connecting in the wiring for a solar panel system for off-grid or grid-tied system. And then we're looking into going ahead and documenting and hooking up all the circuit breakers, labeling everything very, very carefully, testing everything out to make sure everything is working fine, labeling the panel, and then getting the final inspection. And then we're done with the project and we carry on. Then we get specifically into receptacle outlets and how to wire 15 and 20 amp outlets. The end of circuit type of connections, series wired outlets, parallel wired outlets, double wired outlets, and half hot switched outlets and GFCI outlets. And we show you the difference and what all this means showing you a representation of how they are installed in open framed wiring situations in the home, which definitely can be applied to a finished home, and what you find in the walls when you're replacing receptacles, so you want to change the wiring. We're showing you how the wires are connected to the receptacles. There's a couple of different ways to do it, and we show you that and explain why. We'll give you wiring diagrams of switched Outlets in the kitchen that are used for garbage disposal and a shared outlet that's used for a garbage disposal and a dishwasher, how that's wired. We show you the GFCI outlets and how those are wired up, explaining the line and load connections and how those work with a representation of, with wiring diagrams and showing you actually how it's done, how we pigtail out and for the different application. Put that wiring together in attaching it to the GFCI and mounting that and getting that done. And then we get into switches, single pole switches, three-way switches, four-way switches, and dimmer switches. What they're used for, how they're wired, and practical demonstration of installing switches, what the uh, typical wiring scenarios are found in homes, how they're wired. We're showing you wiring diagrams that represent the whole um, installation of switches for the various configurations of wiring the circuits. And we get into more than just one switch being found in a switch box and how those are wired, showing you that with wiring diagrams. And then we get into three-way switches, showing you the difference and what that is between a regular switch and a three-way switch and how three-way switches are wired. We'll provide six different wiring diagrams because not all three-way switches are wired the same and so it can get very very confusing but we really straighten that out and give you a clear picture on how three-way switches are wired and then we get into four-way switches which are used with three-way switches and how those are wired in between three-way switches it's a real easy process if you know what you're doing and we describe the different three uh, four-way switches and their wiring configurations within the three-way switch wiring scenario. And we show you this with wiring diagrams and then we get into dimmer switches, slide dimmer switches, knob switches, and different types of dimmer switches with four different loads, di different amounts of lighting that, be, that would be controlled by the dimmer switches. And then we get into light fixtures, installing an outdoor light fixture, a motion detector, a ceiling light fixture, and how those are prepared and then installed and how the wiring connections are made for all three different scenarios, how a motion detector is installed, how to um, adjust the configurations uh, for the motion detector sensors and how that all works. Then we get into a ceiling light fixture and installing the ceiling light fixture, showing you the safety of installing the, 
the right type of bulb in the fixture housing. And then we get into ceiling fans. We install a ceiling fan with a light kit, and then we install a ceiling fan remote controls. And there's two different types of controls that we use for the remote control. We give you full wiring diagrams showing you how the ceiling fan is wired up and the remote control units are installed. Um, there's a remote control unit and a handheld controller that you have, and then you have a remote control unit and the wall switch replacement unit and how that is installed and wired. And then we get into surge protection. Requirements for surge protection that are now in place by the NEC for any new um, applications where surge protection is required and how that device is installed and how it protects the home against surges and different power problems that come from the environment and how that works with uh, the panel. Then we get into updating an older home. And this is really, really important because there's still a lot of old wiring out there. And so we show you how to identify the old fuse type panels. Again, we get into the different uh, outlets that are outdated, two wire outlets, the old toggle switches, cloth wiring. We show you uh, how there's a lot of wiring problems out there because things have not been installed properly. Things are installed without light boxes, junction boxes, outlet boxes, knob and tube wiring that is not um, converted properly over to new wiring. And we show you exposed wiring problems, open splices, and then we get into the fact what, what should be done about this. Where do you start to update a home? Well, one of the places you definitely want to start is installing smoke detectors and GFCI outlets. We want to protect the home. And then getting into the upgrades, starting with the panel, and then installing AFCI uh, circuit breakers to protect the wiring. And then we plan, finally get into a plan of um, updating the home, installing new wiring, and then, of course, installing new outlets, new light switches, new fixtures. And that is my summary and introduction to the whole course on basic home electrical wiring by example. This course is over four and a half hours long, has over 16 sections to it. It's available 24 hours a day, a one-time price to get enrolled into it, and then it's yours forever. You can access it anytime. You get the downloads, you get any updates that are put up on uh, with this course that will be added. It's all yours for a one-time access fee, and I hope to see you there. We've got a lot of students that have enrolled, and I'd love to see you uh, in that list, too. So thank you very much for viewing this introduction, and maybe it even helped you out with some of the projects you're working on now. I know the course will. 40 years in development, and I'm eager to share that with you. So to get more information about the basic home electrical wiring by example course, come on by asktheelectrician.com. And while you're there, sign up for the free newsletter. It comes out every week. And you'll also receive a free download for my ebook, Top 10 Electrical Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. The newsletter comes out every week, and there's always information about this video course that you just reviewed and other downloadable resources that I have available, including my Home Electrical Wiring ebook. It's a 400 page um, ebook that I produced, and it is available as well. So come on by the website, asktheelectrician.com, ask me a question if you wish through our form, and sign up for the free newsletter, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much.